What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I got Sam over there. It's hot. It is. It's moist. It is super it's moist. Miserable. It's uh, the high today was like 92, but with a feels like temperature of like 101. And it's just the humidity that kills you. If it wasn't so humid, it wouldn't oh, yeah, be so bad. It's so bad because the sun is like kind of so guys without further ado i did go and or well, we did uh go and end up picking up a car uh it wasn't the car i was initially going to go look at but um this one worked out for us it was a lot closer than the one i was going to go look at so without any further ado i'd like to introduce you to our new well new to us 2013 chevy spark this is a front wheel drive tiny little car when I say tiny, I mean it's really tiny. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera how tiny it is. It's not as small as a smart car, but it's not much bigger. Uh, the total weight is about 2,300 pounds, so it's a, it's a pretty light car. It needs a couple things, including tires, uh, on the front especially, because they are bald. I don't know how the previous owner was driving it around, but in the range, she must have had a slick ride, because they are really bald but uh we'll throw some tires on it that's not a problem she's in good shape a little bit of paint fade but not the end of the world you know i don't care if it's it doesn't have to be perfect but it has to run and drive perfectly which it does it starts right up fastest starting car i've ever seen in my life um, and it runs and drives great and i have no issues with it so uh, it's gonna be super easy to get this thing up on a dolly it'll be nice and it has a short you know wheelbase to tow everything around um, keep it behind the RV, so pretty happy with it. <clears throat> Let's see if I have the door open. So, Sam has named this car Tinkerbell because it has a Tinkerbell sticker on the back, which I'll show you guys in a bit. But uh, here's the interior. Excuse the sand over here. Our property is a little sandy, but the seat, this one seat has a little bit of a tear. I could probably sew that back together if I really wanted to, but Sam found really nice seat covers that match this so i think we're gonna go with that and just cover all the seats yeah because plus with the dog hair and stuff like that i'd rather the seat covers get all messed up instead of that right so she put a aftermarket uh bluetooth in which is nice so we have all that going on um we could charge and plug the phones in directly there's a usb <laughs> and then here's the back oh. we got ramps yeah i picked up some ramps to do some oil changes this car sits really really low on the floor. We got it from Harbor Freight. Yeah, I was there. I had to grab a couple other things anyway, so I picked them up from there. Pretty pricey. Yeah, they used to be like 40 bucks from Walmart, but these were like 55, so. And we figured instead of having to go running around in Walmart, see if they have it or not, just to get it so right, right, by the time I waste a lot of time and gas, so I picked up a couple pillows, as you can see. Um, but yeah, it's actually, you know, for a small compact car, guys, there's quite a bit of room in the back. Now, with that seat all the way back like that, you do lose quite a bit of legroom, but I could easily move that seat up. There's a lot of legroom in the front for the front passenger. Now, if we go around here, <clears throat> oh, check out my plate. Don't tread on me. Love that plate. That is awesome. Let's pop this open. Oh, I did go ahead and replace that windshield wiper. It was busted. Look how cute my trunk is. So cute. It's As a really. We got a mailbox. Yeah, I got a mailbox for my property. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty big trunk for a little car. And then if we need even more space, these seats obviously fold forward so we can, you know, use the whole back as a trunk. <laughs> Cody is investigating. He's been dying to get in this car. And I've been trying to keep him out because he sheds everywhere. And, you know, it's a black interior, so it's going to go everywhere. But if you keep telling him no, he'll keep wanting to go in there. So I figured just let him get his joy out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been working on getting the car all situated. Picked it up yesterday. The uh, DMV was like five minutes from their house. So we took it right over there, got it uh, all transferred over, tagged, insured. And she's pretty much ready for the road. Like I said, I just want to get those tires done. That way uh, we're good to go. So we've been working on our property gates a little bit more. Now, everybody tells me, and I was under this influence for the longest time, that uh, RVs are eight feet wide. Well, apparently they're not because this gate right here is 10 feet wide. And before I put this extra fence in, this four foot, we were we, inches. like an inch or two on each side. Like, it was really close. So today we went ahead and installed this second gate and this will give us more than enough room to get the car and the RV in and out uh, without any issues. And the nice thing is if I want to go out 
I don't have to open this big gate. Like if I just want to walk out, I can just open this small little four foot gate and get in and out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do an oil change on this car. Popped out those new ramps I got. Actually pretty nice looking. These are from Harbor Freight, like I said, they're about 55 bucks if you guys are interested. Talk about low clearance. It is rubbing a little bit on the bottom, but there's not too, too much I can do right now. Um, I do need to get the car up. Then we can do the oil change, because this car just sits really low to the ground. So without getting it up in the air, it's not gonna happen. So. You guys gotta look at this. What is little filter? Yeah, it's the smallest oil filter I've ever seen. Like the one for the RV is like five times the size of this thing. We are cute. You know how small this little thing is. It's a little, I got little hands. So it's like legit the palm of my hands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really like Fram, but uh, that's the, literally the only oil filter they had uh, in my size. So this is a really small engine guys. 1.2 liter engine in this car. So it gets really good gas mileage. It's a really small car. Um, Not like 35, 40 bucks to fill it up? No. No? 30 bucks. Well, oh, yeah. we had one bar or one or two bars left and it was 25 bucks to fill. So, um, I, I don't think it's going to cost much more than that. Maybe 30, I think $30 will fill it from empty to full, but I'll yeah. take that compared to the RV being like 150. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right. We're going to pull this car up and see what's going on underneath. Wow. I'm impressed. Samantha actually pulled it up pretty good. We didn't drive off the ramps, which is great. Oh, please. <laughs> I drive a damn 31 foot RV. Come That's on. true. And now as you can see, we got plenty of clearance to get under there. So I'm gonna hop under there, see what's going on, see what kind of size, uh, what size millimeter wrench I need, and we'll get this going. All right, guys. First oil change on a new car. It's officially done. Wasn't too, too bad. Um, the hardest part, not that it was terribly hard, but the oil filter is on the, on the block underneath, obviously, on an angle like inside it's not like hanging off the bottom of the motor like how these ford chassis do on the rv this one is kind of like in there a little bit so had to get it in there wasn't too terrible just kind of had to wait till the block cooled down because that oil filter was ripping hot so other than that everything went pretty good got the supervisor over here <laughs> and the co-supervisor yeah and the manager <laughs> so i'm gonna wrap this up um we're gonna go inside it's just getting so damn hot outside Good morning, guys. This is day two of this vlog, obviously. And uh, today is the day we start wrapping it up and we're gonna head on down a little bit south to another campground. So uh, I got the generator running because it's just another scorcher day here in Florida. The heat index, at least to where we're going, is 102 or something like that. Like, it's gonna be really hot today. So definitely need that generator running to keep the air, especially with this one. He's very dramatic and if it's too hot, you can't breathe good. Anyway, today under this tarp is my tow dolly that we bought a while back. If you're new here, we bought a tow dolly about two and a half months ago or so. So today is the first day, first time ever, I'm gonna be towing a car on a dolly. I've towed trailers all over this country, 42 foot, 43 foot park models and fifth wheels, but uh, this will be the first time I ever tow a tow dolly, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna unravel this. Oh, huh, that's new. That wasn't there when I bought it. Looks like it's a square print from this. Uh -huh. Anyway, I'm gonna unravel this and uh, get ready to pull it out, and then we're gonna pull the RV forward and then hook it up and then tow the car on. All right. Got the tow dolly hooked up, airing up the tires, just checked the pressure, it was at 30, they're supposed to be at 60, and uh, this pump's having a pretty hard time, anything past like 35, 40, it, it starts to really slow down on the fill up, so right now we're at 43, uh, probably another 10 minutes for this tire I'd say, and then we gotta jump over to the other one and air that up, and then we'll roll the car on. I'm having an issue with my electrical. It's like a little finicky, which isn't great because that controls the trailer brakes and the lights. But I did go ahead and order another. Um, this RV comes with a four a four pin. Let's see, under here. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's on the side, sorry. So it comes stock with a four pin, and then he did a four pin to seven blade adapter. But this thing is 
pretty old and kind of crusty looking so I ordered a new four pin to seven blade plus it has a four pin on the side so we won't have to unplug it if I need a four pin uh, you know trailer as well if I ever get like a cargo trailer or a utility trailer so waiting on that to uh, get delivered to be uh, next day so tomorrow I got it delivered to a, a box so I'm gonna hook that up and then today we'll just slowly go down to our destination but waiting on this tire and then we're gonna load this trailer up and just like that she's loaded up this thing is a pain in the butt I'm not gonna lie it's our first time doing it so hopefully it gets easier but it is a pain in the butt it did, I drove it. the woman that didn't do anything. <laughs> I literally I, did everything. I supervised. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even feel it. I drove a little it a little bit to make sure that it's good to go. And you can't even feel it on the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hot. So doing the tie straps, um, it's, it's weird because these wheels are really tiny. So <laughs> I had a, I think I'm going to move this strap up a little bit. Um, but I mean, we... I did emergency stops, hard gas, hard brake. It's solid. I tested everything. That tire pump that I have only let me get up to about 50 PSI before it said, nope, I'm not going any higher. So we're going to stop at a uh, Loves. Man, it is so freaking hot, guys. We're going to stop at a Loves, and I'm going to air it up to 60. 65 is max, but it's really hot here in Florida, so I don't want any blowouts. I think 60 is a good medium. It says anywhere between 50 and 65, so... I think that'll be more than enough, but we're good to go. All safety chain, twisted tied, um, breakaway cable. Um, so I had to do this a little differently. On the video I watched, the guy was like, oh yeah, there's holes on the, on the control arms. You just pop these hooks through. Well, there's no holes on my control arms. So I basically just wrapped the chain around the whole control arm and then linked it together. Ended that on both sides. So I think... That should be more than enough for uh, DOT standards. Uh, all right, let's get in the car because it is hot. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I need some air conditioning, guys. Well, guys, we did it. We officially moved the car and the RV to the campground. We're going to be staying at for a bit. So I got the dolly kind of tucked under there as much as I can so it's not in the way. They don't like anything on the grass. So they want everything on the concrete, including the car. So we'll have to back the car up a little bit more, I think, when we get back. But car towed great. Guys, I didn't even, and I'm not even lying to you, aside from turns and maybe on steep inclines, I don't even know the car is back there. It's it's a super light car. It weighs 2,300 pounds, so uh, RV towed it like a dream. So as I was unloading, and I didn't know, this is my first time towing a car, okay? So I didn't know there's a certain unload area. And if you can look around, it's it's pretty dead here. Okay, it's, it's off season now, so a lot of all the snowbirds went home and stuff. So we have the RV parked right here. And I'm, I'm sitting there unloading the car and I'm hustling. And it's, I don't know if you can see it, but I, I wipe my face already, but it's humid here. And I'm hustling and I'm under the car, unhooking the chains, unhooking the, the lock bar, I'm do, like doing everything, I'm taking the tire straps off. And then this guy comes, uh, you know, a guest. And he, he couldn't have been waiting more than a minute before he said, um, you're gonna be much longer like he was nasty about it, but there's always some jerk always or a Karen never fails But uh Anyway, he had to wait another minute and then uh, we got the car unloaded and Sam quickly moved the RV out of the way for this lovely gentleman And we backed it in and we we're good to go now I got one block up because the driveway goes down a little bit, but not a big deal Anyway, I was going to make dinner tonight, but we got here so late. It's like 7.45 or 8 o'clock right now. <laughs> and uh, so I just, I don't feel like making dinner. After, after doing all this stuff today, I had a long day. Lo learning how to load the car and getting everything right. And I had to go air the tires up on the dolly. We stopped at a Loves, by the way. Aired the uh, rest of the tires up in like two seconds in the truck section. So that was really good. But Tell them how miserable people are. I just, yeah, I just got done telling them. We don't like people talking down to us and treating us like little kids like we literally like he was hustling to get out of the way and this guy was in a rush to get back to his rv i was the fastest moving fat boy you've ever seen in your life like i was really hustling to get this the car undone the front didn't tell us about unhooking at the welcome center so dude just wait a couple of seconds or go over here through the grass yeah put your head out of here oh yeah, she was she was really mad, and, and he, I didn't say anything because I don't hold back. So. Yeah, and we're trying not to get kicked out here because we uh, we have some stuff going on. 
uh, over here. So, and I don't want to have to pay for a campground. Anyway, guys, we're going to go get some dinner uh, with a car, which is so nice to say now. Um, and I'm going to put an ending on this vlog. I hope you guys are doing great. And I'll see you guys in the next video once Sam calms down.